well, bless the Lord. I'm just reminded this morning of how much of a bunch of misfits we are. You know, you're welcome. And I'm probably talking about you. <laughs> you know, we have a word uh, that's very common these days is dysfunctional. And and nowadays that word sort of carries something because it's where we're at as a society. And, and we would look at someone and say, you know, poor thing, you know. But look at the person beside you and say, oh, poor thing. Because truthfully, we're, we're all dysfunctional. Like, like, is there a perfect person here uh, who doesn't struggle with something or have an issue or had an issue or, right? We're, and so here we are, we're a rescued bunch. You know, we're, if you know Bible stories and the, the bunch that gathered to David when he was starting to rise and become something, uh, that, that, that account tells very clearly that it was the down and outers that, that drew themselves to him. It was those who were bankrupt and uh, were just failures at life and were just looking for something different. And, and that, that really describes us. You know, we, we didn't come to the Lord because of how good we were and how much we had it together and we, we recognized our sad state <laughs> and uh, thought, wow, I, I, I need help. And, uh, and, and in a very real way, that's what's drawn us to the church family, to, to God's family. And we're just blessed to be a part of his family. And, uh, and it's, it's not about how much we have it together. It's about how blessed we are that God took us in and, and how much better our lives are now that we're walking with him and just learning, learning what it's all about and, and just the benefits of walking tight with the Lord and with the Lord's people. There, there really is something about having that privilege and, and just, just the blessing of doing that. And, uh, and at first we don't realize how much of a blessing it is. Um, but after a while you realize, wow, this, this stuff really works, you know, like, uh, this really works. <laughs> and, you know, I, I honestly believe that, um, you know, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and, and uh, they won't ask me to open again for a long time because now you've got me <laughs> preaching. And um, so, anyway. Um, so, you know, we've been talking about long time about this Holy Spirit stuff and and um, and how the Holy Spirit, his role here is so very similar, if not identical to the role that Jesus played when he was here. <clears throat> and I, I honestly believe that um, when, when Jesus walked and did his thing, um, he would say to people, come and follow me. He would offer that that, that choice to them and some did and some didn't and and the ones who did we know about them many of them we know about them and the ones that did not follow him um, they're gone we, we have no record of them and and um, I, 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 I have a belief that there's not a person uh, who lives uh, and, and especially in, in say in our country, um, and and I'd like to think any country, irregardless of whatever, that they don't have a choice at some point in their life when they are faced with the decision, come and follow me, and and now this is the work of the Holy Spirit, who says to to who said to us and says to to everyone, come 
and follow me. And and uh, and nobody knows what they're getting themselves into, like the full extent of the blessing of when they respond. And it's kind of like they see a light way off in the distance, knowing that they're lost, knowing that it's dark, and they see a light and they'll say, I'm going over there, I'm going to find the source of that light. And, and for, the, for the many who have made that decision and just struck out in fear, uh, confusion, hesitation, not knowing where they're going to end up and discovering, wow, this is really amazing. This is really amazing. And, and so to that end, I honestly believe that that there is a decision that everyone has to make. There is a, I won't call it a voice, but, but an opportunity that's extended, which really is the words or the, the decision, come and follow me. And, uh, and, and here we are this morning. <laughs> we, we, we are a family. We are a group of people that have responded and, and we have decided to follow. And, and it would be very interesting if, if we could just go from person to person and just in a moment they could say, I know when I decided to follow him. I know the moment I decided and, and the impact that that had and, and then the life change it brought in the future. Hallelujah. So anyway, I'm not sure where that came from, what that's all about. You probably just wanted me to come up here and pray and get this on us. So, uh, so let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just take a moment to think about you and your goodness and give thanks. And we just agree in our hearts that we are grateful and we are thankful that we've been rescued, that we've seen a light and we responded to a voice that said, come, just give it a whirl, follow me for a while, taste and see. And we're so thankful, God, that we had that option that choice and that we taste it and we see we experience and yes this is true it is a good thing to walk with you thank you god for the big difference it's made in our life hallelujah amen amen so uh, i am not speaking this morning and i don't need to get up later so i'm gonna just introduce our guest speaker this morning all the way from costa came in this morning uh, all by himself his wife helped him get here but uh, anyway Mike's going to share <coughs> and, 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 and I want to do it this way yesterday I took some folks up to one of the lakes and it's a se- it was a seven hour ride generally about that long so this one lady these folks are in their 70s there was four of them one lady had polio when she was a kid so as a result one leg doesn't work so hot and and uh, so she's always pulling her saddle over and 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 it wasn't the best ride in for sure and so at the end of it we finally get there and she's really bummed out and she's really uh feeling like she wrecked the whole ride and whatever 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 and, and so i said to her hey uh like you're how old and you had what when you were a kid and and you still decided to do this like don't feel bad because of all that just triumph in your heart that you would have been the last person who should have done this but you decided in your heart to do this and I said be proud of yourself anybody who's healthy can pull this off but someone like you i said be proud of yourself that you were able to have the mental fortitude to say i'm going to do this and i got here (laughs) and so so that that was my serious take on her not to be discouraged that she caused such a problem but to 
just encourage her heart that that she did it. She did it in spite of her condition and her age. And 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 on, on that note, that just brings me full circle to the fact that we're just a bunch of losers here who joined <laughs> up with Jesus and and he he made us winners. And and this morning we have one of those people going to share with us who who should not be here, should not be here, should should not have decided to go to Joe Lake because of whatever, whatever, whatever. And But something in his heart said, I'm doing this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And uh, so we have a winner who's going to share with us this morning. So when it's his turn, he'll be up here and you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, you'll never ask me to open the <laughs> Okay, this lady over here has got something to say. You? This is just for ladies. Oh, I saw this you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> men has had, they have all the time all kinds of fun where we can go. They have camp meetings and barbecues and whatsoever. This time, this is just for ladies. We are get to get, getting together on Tuesday afternoon at 4 o'clock. No men allowed <laughs> at church. Very important that the trace will be there. Very important. Trace. Yeah, Tracy has, has to come there. <laughs> yes. Sorry, not Trace. <laughs> yeah. Wrong Trace. But anyway, yeah. all the ladies, welcome. Four o'clock at church, Tuesday afternoon. That reminds me, if there's a function that the ladies are not allowed to come to. Oh my God. <laughs> we're definitely be one, not opening anymore. It'll That's be it. Wednesday morning. Um, men's prayer thing, we're doing it once a month now uh, through the summer. And this Wednesday is our get together, so do not bring your wives. Thank you. <laughs> message for us misfits today. The Lord has given me a vision, a vision of a beautiful eagle soaring up and down this valley, and on its wings are people standing, shouting shouts of victory. And the eagle is singing his song of victory with them. People, the people on the, on the wings of this eagle is Casey C, is our church family. And the eagle represents the Lord. And he's telling us we have victory. We have victory because we are a faithful church. We have maintained our faithfulness through everything. This church has overcome so much because of our faith. The enemy's tried to knock us down. He's tried so many times. And as many times as he's tried, he's failed because we are a faithful church. And we have victory. And the Lord is telling us today, remain faithful to me. Remain faithful to me, and I will carry you on my wings from victory to victory. Hallelujah. So much for being this with. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is victory. We have victory. Victory in our lives. church in this valley.
come to talk to you today about victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Victory in Jesus. Claim it for yourself this morning. Claim it for your loved ones and your family. Claim it. Victory in Jesus. Victory in the Holy Spirit this morning. Hallelujah. Christ in us. Hallelujah. Christ in us that has the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't really have to talk this morning now. We can just praise God all morning. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I want to talk this morning. I've been excited to talk to you about the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's part of a testimony of my life. And it's part of it is teaching from the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians it says that living for God is more than fancy talk. It's living by the power of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the power of God is the Holy Spirit in us. And as I was seeking God about this very thing, I, I sought the Lord and he answered me. I said, what about the power of God in our lives? What about when I stumble and fall and I trip and I fall down and, and, and I get back up in the Lord and I walk again and I, and I trip and I fall down and I, I see that there was two powers in my life. There was the power of sin and the power of the Holy Spirit. And I got it confused. As I walked with the Lord, I gave them equal booking. I gave them equal chance. And I started to seek God and I said, God, how does this work? How is it? And he gave me a picture and I'm going to give you that picture. And when I got saved, the Holy Spirit came to dwell in me. And the power of sin was set aside. And the power of the life-giving Spirit took over inside of me. Praise God. But the power of sin was sitting out there in two horsepower or four horsepower, or five or ten or, or fifteen horsepower sin out there. It had a power to it. And what was happening, when I went to make a, a choice or a decision, I was going to that power. And I'd pick up from the power of sin pile, instead of turn to the Holy Spirit in me. And I would fall. And I'd say, God, what's wrong? How can that be? How can a Christian... and deal with sin in your life this way and I was going to the wrong power I was going to the wrong pile all the time I was thinking of walking with God and going to the sin power and taking the sin power for the choices in my life and I would fail and fall down and I would question God. I'd say, God, this is hard. Why doesn't it work? Like in my life. And again, I was reminded, I'm picking from the wrong power. And, and if you want an example of that, maybe things are making me angry. And I can either pick from that power of sin and maybe I'll pick a 10 horsepower and really blast whatever it is that's making me angry <coughs> or maybe I would pick from the Holy Spirit 
love, joy, peace, patience, faithfulness, gentleness, Good. kindness, self-control. Yeah. Maybe, maybe this time I would get it. And I started to realize that my biggest problem wasn't the sin out there, but it was the power that I was picking to run my life. And when I turned to start consciously picking the Holy Spirit's power to run my life, it made a tremendous difference. Hallelujah. When I consciously thought, what do I do with this decision? or choice when I consciously thought about what movie do I pick or what show do I watch do I pick from that pile with power to it or do I turn to the Holy Spirit and he says let's do something tonight that glorifies and edifies God And I started to turn around in my life. It started to change the way I thought. And I realized that a lot of the time I was picking from the sin power because that's how I'd been trained. That's what I'd learned. And it was a habit. And I needed to make new habits. I needed to change inside by the renewing of my mind, by reading the Word of God, yep. by putting on the mind of Christ, yep. all the things that we've been encouraged to do over the years, yep. all the things we've been encouraged to do to change the way we think. Why? Because I was raised in a wrong way. I was raised contrary to the ways of God. but I can live according to the Holy Spirit. So I want to go back to a moment to 1 Corinthians, living for God is much more than fancy talk. Yeah. It's living by the power of God. Yeah. And the power of God yeah. is available to us yeah. every moment of our saved lives. Yeah. From the moment we get saved, that power of sin was put aside and the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of us. Yeah. You desperately need to do something with it. Yeah. You desperately need to do something with it. In Romans 5, It says, but all who receive God's wonderful, gracious gift of righteousness will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Yes. All, yes. every one of us can live in, in triumph over sin. Yeah. In Romans 6 and 7, it's 6, 6 and 7, it says, that we've been set free from the power of sin. Yeah. Sin didn't disappear at that moment. Yeah. Sin was still there. Yeah. The world is full of it. Yeah. And the power behind it, Satan, is still at work. But we have victory. The power of sin is broken and we have victory in Jesus Christ. That's right. And I have looked at that power set aside and looked at the power in me carefully, carefully. And we can have victory every time. Yep. Hallelujah. Yep. I've done it both ways. I've picked from that pile and had the results in my life of that pile. Or I have picked from the Holy Spirit yes. 
and had victory. Amen. And every time we are free in 620, Romans 6.22, we are free, free of the power of sin. Yes. Sin is still out there. But we are free of the power. Amen. But we need to turn. We need to do something. And that's turn to the power of the Holy Spirit. There's power in your decisions and choices. That's right. In everything you choose to do. There's power in it. And it's either power from the sin pile. Or it's power from the Holy Spirit. But there's power. And so we have power today. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says it's living by the power of God. In Philippians 2.13. That blew away a long time ago. But I know about where it is. Huh? Very good. Philippians 2.13. For God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey Him and the power to do what pleases Him. And that power is the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy tells us that we did not receive a spirit of fear and timidity. That's not what God gave us at salvation. At salvation, God gave us a power, a spirit of power yes. and love and self-discipline. Yes, and we need to, by habit and by <clears throat> intention, work with our, our minds and our heart in our decisions that what takes place every time I choose is I go to the Holy Spirit power. The Bible that tells me that he who began a good work in me will complete it. Oh, amen. I stand on that one. But I have to turn to him every day. And the main way that I have turned to him that is different as the years went on is through the word of God. To become familiar with the Word of God. To become a friend and a companion. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this book has literally saved my life. I struggled in my own strength, and everybody will, and I failed in my own strength in, in, in what, what I did and, and I'm talking after I was saved not before and so I have seen people many people stumble at the issue of well sin wins it's because we're walking in the power of sin. And it's been taken from our life. Leave it alone. And go to the other power. The power of the Holy Spirit. Christ in us. <coughs> Whom the sun sets free. Is free indeed. Yeah. Freedom. There's great freedom. In learning to walk with the Holy Spirit. That is the Son of God. You shall know the truth. You shall know it from the Word of God. You'll know the truth, and it will set you free. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, that's right, there's freedom. And the Spirit of the Lord is here this morning. Yes, He is. The Spirit of the Lord is here for freedom for each one of us. Yes. So we need to turn, or we want to turn, or we can turn to Him and say, God, I want freedom. I'm tired of 
falling down and getting up. It's weary. And I want freedom. And I've walked in freedom for I don't know how much time. Am I perfectly free? No. Do I have more to do? Yes. But I run the race to win a prize. That's right. Yeah. The crown that the Lord has for us at the end. Yep. And each one of us runs and continues to turn to the Lord and run that race. Freedom will be ours. Amen. Right. I have a song this morning that is about my testimony. It's called My Testimony. You'll be able to tell by the title. And listen to it. And think about the power of God, the Holy Spirit in our life. Think about the victories that you've had, how you've turned to the Lord and, and got victory. And think about the victories you've had and then commit to him the things that you want for victory in the future. He's a victorious God. Yes. And and we're in this. We're in it to win. Yep. We're on the winning side. That's the truth. Yeah. I'm a misfit. <laughs> Same as everybody else. I, I'm a proud misfit. Because the Lord has lifted me up. He said... Yeah. One day he said to me, come to me all you're weary and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. And I have. I've come and he's given me rest. He's allowed me to stand up here and, and talk about the things of God because they're valuable to my life. And, and I'm excited that they might be valuable to somebody else's life. That's right. So think about your testimony today as this song plays. What is your testimony to God? Not to other people, but what's our testimony to God? God, this is what I want to do for you and with you. So let's listen to it. This is my testimony. I've been raised from death to life. Hallelujah. And all of us have. Our righteousness is in Christ. For each one of us. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I pray freedom for the hearts that are here this morning. Freedom for every heart that hears this message and this song and this and your spirit. I pray freedom, freedom to follow you, freedom to write a new testimony yes, Lord. of what you are doing in our lives. Yes, Lord. Each day forward, I pray freedom freedom in Jesus name and our precious Savior says yes there's freedom for each one of you yes freedom in the name of Jesus you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free and whom the Son sets free is free indeed is free so be free this morning be set free. Make freedom part of your testimony. Freedom in God. Hallelujah. Bless your week. Bless each one here. Thank you very much.